Don't miss our first video covering physical installation of this ECU. Check out the link below. Alright, so now we're going to go over installing the tuning software and logging software, which is on the USB key. You're going to plug that into your laptop. And when you open up your My Computer, you'll see a removable disk, and it'll have this folder within it. Open that folder. This is the general information on the ECU, tuning information, installation information, etc. This is the model specific documentation for this part number. Uh, what you really want to do now though is go ahead and, and, and I highly advise you review those documents. Please read them. Uh, but what we're going to do now is install the tuning software. So go ahead and double click on MSPNPP setup.exe, accept the default path. This shows what it's going to install, base maps, documentation, tuner studio, and mega log viewer, and then next to next to next to next, etc. Once that finishes, it'll install the tuner studio piece, so you're going to accept and then next, next, next install. And then it's going to do the same thing for mega log viewer once that completes. So here we are with mega log viewer, next, I accept, next, 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 install. When that finishes, you can uncheck the Launch Megalog Viewer box, because we don't need to open that right now. Click Finish, then it's going to prompt you. Uh, the installation file is the documentation that we are looking at a moment ago. You can uncheck that and click Finish. And now you can connect your MS3 Pro Plug and Play ECU to your laptop using the supplied serial cable or a USB adapter if your laptop only has a USB port. Alright, so now it's time to connect to your MSPMP Pro for the first time. So I want you to go to the Start menu and open Tuner Studio, which you just installed. And then when it opens, this is what you're going to see more or less. Uh, you won't have my 1967 Camaro project added to yours, I'm sure, but that's okay. Go up to File, Open Project. Come down here to MSPMP Pro and click it. And then click the Select button. That's going to open the correct project within Tuner Studio. Now I want you to key on to power up the ECU. And nothing's going to happen. It's not supposed to quite yet. You're almost there. Go up here to Communications, Settings, and click Detect. If you're plugged into a USB port, it's more than likely going to detect two ports, a USB D2XX port and a COM port. In this case it's COM3. Either of those will work. D2XX is a little faster, so I'd suggest that. Click Accept. Test Port. Successful! Yay! Click Accept. Alright, you are now connected to your ECU. One more quick note, if you ever decide you need to go back to the base map that came on this ECU when it arrived, which is already loaded now, uh, but if you make some changes need to come back, if you go up to File and Load Tune, you will see this 9904 Mustang GT 151 MSQ. Select that, open it. Would you like to send and burn this? Yes. And you're right back to the original settings that came on your plug and play ECU. Okay, so it's almost party time. We just got to tell the ECU what size injectors you're running. It comes default configured for the factory 19 pound injectors. Then we're going to start the engine up and uh, we're going to set base timing and at that point you will be ready to start tuning the engine. So I want you to come back into Tuner Studio here. Basic settings, engine and sequential settings and required fuel. You'll hear this uh, refer to that as rec fuel sometimes for short. That's basically telling the ECU what size injectors you have. You can see in here it's configured for a 4.6 liter engine with 8 cylinders, 19 pound injectors, and an air fuel ratio of 14.7 to 1 for stoichiometric. That's gasoline's air, stoichiometric air fuel ratio. Um, if you want to change your injector size or your fuel type, this is where you come. So uh, if you want to run 200 pound injectors, come in here, make sure pound hour is selected over here, put in 200 pounds in the injector flow. Um, if you want to run gasoline, 14.7 is your number. If you want to run E85 or methanol or whatever else, put in the stoichiometric air fuel ratio here. And that will get your base 
tune very, very close to where the engine should start. I'm going to put 200 pound injectors in here. I'm going to click OK. You can see it dramatically changed my rec fuel. I'm going to go back here. I'm going to put 19 pounds back in here because I've still got factory injectors in this Mustang. Burn. Close. Let's move on. It's time to fire this puppy up. All right, so final steps before you get to uh, get to tuning on this thing. Uh, let's calibrate your throttle position. So if you look here at throttle position, um, you may find that it's it's pretty accurate right out the gate, but I've intentionally messed this one up just so you can see what it could look like because it needs to be calibrated to your TPS and its adjustment. So this is negative 24.7, that's at closed throttle. And if I open the throttle all the way, it maxes out at 111 percent so we need to, s to set that up we need to calibrate that so if you go up here to tools calibrate TPS leave your throttle completely closed and click this get current button now open the throttle 100 percent and cl click get current on the full throttle ADC count and then click accept You'll see now we have 100% when we're at full throttle and 0% when we're closed. Now let's set our base timing. First off though, let's talk about why it's important. I'm going to set a gauge here. Uh, if you come down to uh, and right click on any of the gauges here, you can change them to whatever you want. I'm going to change this one to Ignition Advance, which is under Outputs 2. Now we know how much Ignition Advance is being commanded based on where this engine's currently operating, 1740 RPMs at 0% throttle, no load. Um, so if I look in my ignition table, you'll see that it's right here and it's interpolating between this 10.5, 12.3, 14.0, and 16.0. Um, and I'm on an engine stimulator not right now, not on a uh, running engine, so this is a, it's faking the ECU out, making it think it's running. So there's no manifold, there's no vacuum in the manifold right now. Um, so anyway, that's where it's, uh, or it's operating, and it's interpolating that to 13.1 degrees. But how do you know that that 13.1 degrees is actually 13.1 degrees at the engine? That's the purpose of setting your base timing. So the way we do that is go up here to Ignition Settings, Ignition Options, Wheel Decoder, and in this top right corner, we want to set this fixed advance setting to fixed timing and then set it to 10 degrees and you can see that it's commanding now the ECU is commanding the engine to run at 10 degrees so you'll actually have your engine running and you'll set it to a fixed 10 degrees of timing and then you will use a timing light to verify that that is actually getting 10 degrees of timing if you find that that timing light does not agree with this 10 degrees for instance you put the timing you've got this commanding 10 degrees you put the timing light um, on the engine and you see that it's actually at 13 degrees before top dead center you're going to come in and make a change to this number up or down whatever it takes to get that timing light to agree with your commanded timing once you've done that the ECU knows where the engine is and its rotation within a degree and that means that when you command 21 degrees of uh, ignition timing at 7,000 RPM and wide open load on a naturally aspirated engine that you actually get 21 degrees. I'm going to let Eddie walk us through this. Okay, so now we have the engine running and we have the ignition timing locked. And now the main objective is to make sure the timing of the actual engine matches up with the timing that's being commanded from ECU. So let's connect up your timing light. It's going to need power and ground in the battery. And then you should be able to wrap your inductive pickup around the two wires that go to your number one coil right here. If you remember, we locked the timing at 10 degrees, so it's asking for 10 degrees all the time. Now we need to make sure that it's in fact 10 degrees here at the engine. If you find that it is not, just change this tooth number one angle up or down until the timing light says 10 degrees as you've commanded. That's really all we're doing here. It's real simple. I'm over explaining it, but it's real simple. At the end of the day, what this ECU is commanding needs to match what you see on your timing light. That's it. If it doesn't, adjust this number. That's it. Once you've done that, make sure you remember to turn off fixed timing and go back to use table. That way it will use the 
timing that's commanded in your ignition table instead of that set 10 degrees we had here. The startup map provided is very close for a bone stock vehicle like the one we developed it on. If your car is exactly like ours, it's going to run pretty close to like ours, which is good. Regardless though, we recommend you bring it to a qualified tuner and put it on their dyno and let them dial it into perfection for your engine's needs, and then go enjoy your car. like this video please like and subscribe below so that you'll know when we put out some more cool content that you'll be interested in.